Hey everybody, welcome back to Brew Sports. Welcome to Happy Hour, our third daily show that we're going to run every single Monday through Friday from 4 to 5 p.m. Central Time. We welcome you inside the studio. If you've been able to join us for some of our other broadcasts we've had throughout the day, we thank you for that opportunity to uh, check out what Brew Sports has to offer for you. We had uh, two up front earlier today with myself and Simon Proven. If you maybe missed the morning brew from 7 to 8 a.m. Central with myself, and Jamie Evers. That's definitely something to go back and check out. And of course, our lunchtime show, Halftime, go and check that out as well to myself and Tanner Burke. We do have one more exciting show coming up for you later on tonight as well, as Ryan Theus and uh, Barry Nelson will jump on to do the college road trip from 5 to 6 p.m. Central Time, so make sure you go check that out. But we welcome you inside now to Happy Hour. Uh, I am Baxter Colburn. I'm joined by Tika Griesbach. Tika, great to see you. Welcome to Happy Hour. How are we doing today? I'm good. A little bit nervous, but A little bit excited. nervous? <laughs> oh, come on now. There's no reason to be nervous. It's, 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 a, it's an exciting time. You get to talk about sports. You just get to see what the heck is going on. But before we get to any of that, though, I feel like we need to let people know a little bit more about ourselves and just kind of reiterate why we like the sports world so much. So why don't you give us a little bit of background about yourself and uh, just some of the teams and players that you support and love so much. Sure. All right. So um, as Baxter said, my name is Tika Griesbach. I'm going to go ahead right away and tell you that my mom made up my name. Everyone always asks right I always away. always wondered. Yeah. yeah they always sense. ask, does your name stand for something? Is it short for something? <laughs> it's just Tika. My mom made it up. Um, but I'm excited to be here. Um, I'm really excited to hopefully bring a new perspective to the table. Um, I grew up as a dancer my whole life. I never was really into sports. But Interesting. I, yeah. I did have, I do have two older brothers, so they were very into sports. Oh, um, but I would never really join them outside in the summer when they played sports because they were always they always had each other so I just did my dance thing um, but <laughs> they mostly played um, football was their main sport and so for whatever reason I always was more interested in basketball hmm. um, so I was excited when I got the opportunity to dance for the NBA um, the 2014-2015 season I danced for the Milwaukee Bucks um, hmm. so that only enhanced my love That's of awesome. basketball yeah so um, really excited about the opportunity. It was awesome. I only did it for a year just because I decided I wanted to start focusing on my education um, or continue focusing on my education. I go to school at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee and I graduate this spring. Ooh, are you so, excited? Are you just yeah. like, thank you, God? Yeah. Has it been a fast four years, though? Some people are like, it took way too long and other people are like, it flew by. It flew by. Did it really? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Well, I you mean, could, I still you have could... two and a half more months, but... True, but so. still, I mean, <laughs> still, you only have two and a half more months, though. Like, senior After year four, didn't it just start, though. Like, that's crazy. Yeah. That's a lot of crazy stuff. Well, who do you, who do you support though where does your fandom lie when you tell people be like you know what I am a sports fan because I support this team or I support this player um, I have to say the Milwaukee Bucks just because really? I yeah just okay. because I, I you can't. don't hear a lot of diehard Bucks fans so that's that's completely fine and there's some people back home from my hometown that are big <laughs> Bucks fans but I have I mean as a Milwaukee Bucks dancer alumni of course you have to yeah it, I've always been a big fan and that just like I said, enhance my love for, hmm. for the Bucks. Any other so. Wisconsin sports at all, or just Bucks? Packers, yeah, Packers, the, 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 whole, the, whole, the whole mitten or the whole glove, I guess, rather yes. not the mitten. Sorry, Michigan people. <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> Always lived in Wisconsin, so. There you go. Well, yeah. that's exciting. Well, we're excited to have you on the show, uh, of course, as the co-host for this. We're going to be here Monday through Friday talking about um, the hot topics in the sports world, uh, sharing some other insight with people as well, too. So we've got a lot of great stuff coming up for you today that you're definitely going to not want to miss. Uh, we do encourage you that are watching, of course, live on Facebook to drop comments about anything that we do talk about. Uh, we definitely want to hear from you. Uh, one of our big topics that we're going to talk about uh, in just a moment is whether or not uh, the NFL ref should be paid. There's some interesting information and articles that have been coming out about that as well, too. Uh, so we are going to get to that here in just a brief moment. But uh, really fast history about me. If you've been watching earlier, you already know my whole little spiel here. But I've been in broadcasting for about six years. Uh, work for Attention Area Media, which is the parent company here for Brew Sports. I'm just excited to, and blessed, honestly, to have this opportunity to get to talk uh, about sports on a daily basis with uh, with Tika, with Tanner, with Jamie, and uh, with Simon as well, too. So uh, I feel like I've got the greatest job in the world, honestly, because I get to work with the greatest people in the world as well, too. So we've got a lot of great stuff coming up for you, and uh, I'm excited to do it, honestly. Are you ready to do it? I'm ready. All right. Let's so first thing that uh, we think is, uh, is rather interesting, you found this article, Tika, so mm -hmm. give us a little bit more info about what exactly uh, people are mulling over about the NFL right now. Well, the NFL is considering making referees full-time um, so yeah I found that and thought it was really interesting it really caught my eye um, but you know some of the positives um, they're gonna have better centralized training um, I think mm. that that'll ultimately give the refs better consistency true um, I think I think that's gonna be a really big positive and yeah I would agree with you on that one it, it's so interesting too when you look at 
being a, a referee for professional sports, it's different for baseball because you have 160 whatever games. You know, the NHL, you've got 85 or 84, something like that. The NBA has got a ton of games as well, too. But the NFL, you only work 16 games, regular season games. I know there's preseason in there as well, too, of course, and sometimes the playoffs if you get chosen, of course. But NFL referee is, and the, the average at least currently, is working out to, uh, by the year 2019, referees are going to be paid $205,000 to work 16 days in an entire calendar year, yeah. basically. And, and I know that there's other stuff that goes into it, of course, so I want to take anything away from the NFL referees, but I feel like that is a bit, is that a bit ridiculous? Yeah, I, I completely agree. I think, I mean, that's a huge amount of money. Just for, and when you, just 16 games, I mean. I mean, like I said, maybe, maybe 20 if you get four preseason games, yeah. maybe 22 or so if you do playoff games as well, too. But if you're getting paid almost over $200,000 to work a couple times a year. Some people might say, well, that's a dream job. That's what I want to right. do. And if you're obviously a professional athlete, you're getting paid even more than that to, to work literally about the same. But these, these are people, though, that they're not getting health benefits. They're not getting a pension. They're not getting paid time off as well, too. So you're dedicating 30 to 40 hours of your week outside of your already normal job to then go and do this other almost full-time job basically, but you don't get the benefits. But do you need yeah. the benefits though? Cause a lot of these guys already have full-time jobs. Right. I don't, I don't know if that's There's a lot of positives and negatives to this. Do you feel like referees are overpaid for the jobs that they have to do? I mean, that's a lot of money. And I think that maybe we should start considering. <laughs> I feel like that money could go someplace else. I feel yeah. like, but yeah, you know, when, I you, completely agree. when you have the NFL though, that makes $9 billion a year. Sure. Yeah. There's the money's got to go somewhere, but yeah. couldn't you do more positive little... things with the money? I feel like at that I point, I mean, yeah. you know, Corey agrees with us on Facebook as well too. He was saying, yeah, that's a lot of money, but a lot of money on the line, you know, huge responsibility. And how many times do we hear the age old thing? Refs messed up the game. Ref screwed this up. Ref screwed that right. up. I mean, it happens way too often, I feel like. And yeah. for the amount of money you're being paid, of course, you can flip it again for the, for the professional athletes. Well, you're being paid $18 million a year. You think you could you know, throw a pass 50 yards and not have it intercepted. Like, come on. You know, I, it's everybody's, there's a lot of responsibility that I feel like that goes with that. But I just, I don't know. I don't, I don't know exactly if referees are being paid too much or what the, what the suitable amount of money would be. Right. That's a good question. I yeah. mean, I, I definitely... I don't know. I think that's a little much. I, I do agree. So what I mean, would be? Is, a I mean, good is, is even more? Is even a hundred thousand dollars too much to, to work that little, or that much? I know. I don't know. If you're working that much, I guess basically. I mean, I, you hear about and some of my friends that I have. Uh, one of her mothers uh, works, or her mom, not her mother. She doesn't have multiple mothers, but <laughs> her her mom works uh, as a tax accountant. So come tax season, she makes a hundred thousand dollars for three months of work but she works 13, 14 hours a day right. doing that sort of thing. So, and I mean, something like taxes is important. That's a way of life. It's a government issue. You have to do it. Playing sports, some people might say is a luxury or refereeing sports is a luxury, right. you know? Right. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like there's so many different ways that you go with this, of course. I mean, we want to hear from you guys as well, too, on, uh, on Facebook as well. Let us know your comments uh, if, if you think that the referees are... You know, freaking out about it. Uh, you know, Ryan's saying, too, that the NHL and the NBA both get 82 games a year. So uh, those referees, and we were looking even beforehand, a, a veteran Major League Baseball referee makes, right, makes right around $400,000 a year. But they also get paid time off. They get benefits. They get all that stuff because that literally is their job because they're working 140-plus days a year, basically, which makes sense, I guess. Mm -hmm. I mean, how often do you ever hear, though, about other players or other leagues saying, hey, we're our players aren't getting paid enough or our medical staff or whatever? So I feel like that money could be allocated so much better, honestly. Yeah, I think it definitely could. It really just depends, honestly, I guess, with uh, with that when you when you really talk to different people. So uh, let us know your thoughts about that, of course, on Facebook. Uh, that way you can get into the conversation. Uh, James makes a good point as well, too. He says, nurses who saves lives should be paid more than people to make calls in a professional game. I've also heard people saying that about uh, about teachers. My wife was a teacher for one, mm -hmm. a year and a half. I mean, I can divulge the fact that she didn't get paid nearly that much money uh, to, right. to teach, even though she was in a very good district as well, too. But you know, you're, you're helping shape the future rather than shaping, you know, a game. Right. It's just a game at right. the end of the day. When you compare it to, you know, teaching to yeah. referees, I think that... Exactly. When I mean, you compare it that way, it seems pretty. Ridiculous. And I can even give a, you know, we can even give shout outs to those people that work in the news industry. How many times do you hear people that like, oh, I work a 10, 12 hour shift, you know, to report the news or to be a journalist, basically, and I get paid twenty five thousand dollars a year if I'm lucky, and right. I get like crappy insurance and two pay, two days paid vacation, like, 
these are people that are helping fuel the world as a whole. I mean, it's also kind of funny, too, when you consider, and I could be totally wrong on this, but the, the President of the United States, I think, makes $400,000 a year. I could be totally wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure. And you're seeing a Major League Baseball referee getting paid equally to that. But it's, it's hard to compare apples to apples, honestly, yeah, in that yeah. situation. So I, I, I don't know. Um, it just sounds crazy when you compare it. It is. It is. You're absolutely right about that. Ryan also commented as well on Facebook saying he got paid $40 to ref Pop Warner football games for eight-year-olds. So, you know, he would say six figures is, of course, a decent amount for the level and the exposure the NFL referees are subject to. It's a good positive argument for it in that regards, I guess, saying, well, hey, you're under already so much pressure. Why wouldn't you get paid that much money? I know. I don't know. I don't know. I, don't know. So, I, I, I have a hard time justifying that either way, I feel like. So. Yeah. I don't know. But anyway, like we said, we want to know your guys' thoughts and comments about that. Um, we want to move along uh, to a couple other things that we've got planned for you here on the show as well, too. Uh, Tika, you found some very interesting uh, videos for us that uh, you thought would make a, a good thing to, to share, of course. Uh, a couple of feel-good, funny kind of moments, I guess, that we've, that we've exposed. So tell us about that first video that you found, and then we'll, uh, we'll take a look at it here. The wrestling one, the first one? Yes, we'll, we'll do the, re one yeah, the wrestling right. one we'll do first, basically. Um, I saw this earlier this morning and thought it was cute and funny. Um, there's a young boy who wants no part of wrestling with a young girl. Um, <laughs> uh, let's play it. And All right, we'll take a look at yeah, it here fast, and then we'll talk about it. He really just has no reason or rhyme to want to be involved in that fight, yeah, basically, I since even from the get-go. And even when he, like, finally lays down to get pinned, he just is like, yeah. Right. Like, I don't really know. What, I don't know, I don't know if do. he's nervous or if someone had told him about cooties right before. <laughs> or... <laughs> well, I mean, the, this, this mom posted it on her Instagram, and then, of course, Fox Sports and a lot of other people have picked it up as well, too. But, I mean, they, it was funny, too, they really just kind of lay out the details. It's like, you know, was he practicing for track season? Was he, you know, did he have a crush on her and he was just trying to play hard to get? I mean, like... I, I, I mean, what do you what do you say at that? I mean, these kids are probably uh, he couldn't have been more than six or seven years old. Oh, honestly, I don't yeah. I don't think he was that old when he was when we were doing something like that. But uh, kind of funny, honestly, to to see it that regards. All right, uh, moving on to the next one. What uh, what's this next one that you found, courtesy of the Guardian? So this next one, um, they gave a little boy the opportunity to score the winning shot. Score the winning shot. So Marquette University, right here in our beautiful Milwaukee, uh, did uh, something with Make-A-Wish uh, for a, a boy named Luca during their basketball practice. So take a look. Kind of a cool moment here. <laughs> You got it out. Look, you're going to be down here on the baseline. And Luke's going to help you out on this one, okay? Mm -hmm. Give the ball to Luca. Pick him up. And dunk that thing. He can dunk it. He can dunk No pressure. We're only down one. <laughs> no pressure. Go, Luca, go. That's awesome. It's always cool to see stuff like that as well, too. I feel like when you're, you know, I mean, I'm, obviously Luca understands, like, it's you know, just practice, just mm -hmm. for fun. But to be able to, to be a part of that and to feel part of that community, I feel like, it's just such kind of a, yeah. kind of a cool feel-good moment, honestly. It's so heartwarming. And it then is. I think after that, they, fought, they continue to chant his name. And yeah. I, like, I can imagine that just made his month. Oh, sure absolutely. It was so exciting. Absolutely. Uh, the last video we want to share with you as well, too, uh, as we're kind of just doing some fun and feel-good moment here videos with you briefly, uh, has to do from a college basketball game. Fresno State and Boise State were playing uh, just a couple of days ago, and um, uh, The Guardian, among other people, reported this basically. Uh, a basketball, as you'll see here, gets stuck in the basketball hoop. doesn't happen very often. Sometimes it gets stuck by the rim, but this gets lodged in such an awkward place that uh, you, you kind of see that um, people had to, to turn to, mo to different ways to basically no try to, to force yeah. the ball out. So a hero comes to the rescue here. Take a look. It's 2017. Isn't there an app for this? This is the ultimate game, of course. If you can also get the ball to go in the bucket, you should get points. That's, that's <laughs> my feeling. 
The commentary is even, even yeah. better. <laughs> this guy's about to break the basket. That's Lazaro Rojas, who is redshirting. Six foot eleven, the freshman out of Brazil. He's making oh, contact, wow. but he can't quite get it free. Oh, and here's a little fella. Oh, this doesn't. This, this is. This is great. <laughs> Look at Morales, little guy, to do it. Get it, get it. He's a chance to be a hero. This young man will be on national television everywhere. Hey. There you go. <laughs> He's going to forever remember get the, get the day. Get scholarship. You will never forget that. Get a scholarship. I love it. <laughs> MVP, the, just the crowd loving it. But th that's kind of funny too. Dad and the, you know, the family, they're just on the, those front court seats basically. We're like, ah, dad, you know, I could go get that. I could, yeah, I could make just, that happen just basically. Come into a game, going to have fun, and who would have thought? <laughs> now it's, their kid's famous. There you go. Yeah, seriously, though, like national television. You're just like, okay, I'm just going to throw you up in the stands here really fast. You can go ahead and grab that. Uh, kind of funny. Aaron also here on, on Facebook says, did you see the – transgender student um, on hormones in Texas won the state wrestling championship. I did see, I, I read the article I saw about it, but I don't, I don't know if you got a chance to see that or not, Tika, basically. So there's a lot of people that are up in arms, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, listeners and viewers, but there's a transgender student that you know, was a guy that transgendered or changed mm -hmm. to a female and then went undefeated in the wrestling and the high school wrestling division that she was in and won the state title and people are up in arms because they're saying well it was really a guy wrestling yeah. in a girls division even though he changed gender and mm -hmm. was now a female technically and some people are boycotting that people are saying that's absolutely ridiculous like it shouldn't be allowed i i this is this is always a hard subject to try to yeah. to dance around because you you obviously it needs to be talked about at times it needs to be communicated properly but you never know officially which side of the fence to fall on when it right, comes to stuff right. like this and i'm sure she's feeling great you know having won yeah and then to see all the backlash on the internet of exactly that it's not fair she shouldn't have won um how yeah, do you feel sure. about that? Do you feel like that was something that shouldn't be allowed? If you, for, for, for transgender, um, I feel like that, I mean, there's a lot of different ways I feel like that you can go with that. Right. I mean, I, I definitely see so, both sides of it. Um, I, I understand. I mean, I get why people would think like, oh, well, that, that doesn't seem fair um, just because she used to be a guy. Mm -hmm. um, but I also think that, you know, that he had felt that he wanted to tra change and he wanted to, you know, compete in a in the sport as a woman and I mean we should I mean I think it should be celebrated too I mean good for him for you know making that change I know it's a hard change mm -hmm. to make um and it's becoming more and more popular but I don't know I mean I definitely see both sides of it and it's a hard it, it's topic a to, it's a hard thing because about. if you no matter really which way you come down on it I mean like my my first initial reaction when I heard this I was like no it shouldn't be allowed I'm like you used right. to be a boy like you physically are made stronger oh it was okay so a correction apparently it was a girl that transitioned to a guy he mm -hmm. was on roids and wrestled in the division um, that was born he was born a female but wrestled okay. in the guys division but that's interesting though either see that changes well, it yeah now. That, that does that, make that it changes, a little bit different <laughs> it does that i mean I feel like that changes the whole the whole conversation basically when you when you are trying to figure out if it's okay but i, I feel like either way though i feel like anytime there is that trans that transgender movement in sports mm -hmm. i feel like you're kind of taking yourself out of the game yeah. i feel like if you you know if i if I was a female and I wanted to be a, a, a guy so that way I could play football or feel more accepted to play football, I feel like that would be so much more, you know, I feel like that would be hard. I feel like, no, you made the switch. You are no longer, you know, you're, you're I don't know. I see that's the thing. There's, right. Like, how do you, how do you, you phrase it? You start thinking it? about it one way and then you're like, well. Yeah, because um, at the same time, though, if you are a female, you can technically play sports, especially mm -hmm. in high school. I mean, you can, if your high school does not offer the sport in your specific gender, so if hypothetically, if there was a girls soccer team and there was no guy soccer team, to my knowledge, depending on the state rules, guys can try out for the, for the girls team and vice versa, basically, because I've, I went to high school with a couple of people that uh, well, that would play sports for the guys' teams, or I had a good friend in high school that was the starting kicker for one of the big high schools in the city that I grew up for, and she was celebrated. She mm -hmm. was an incredible athlete on, on the soccer field. That's why she was a good kicker, too, because she had so much power. Mm -hmm. But how do you 
I don't know. I don't know the best way to address something like this. And I, I'm hoping that more people can comment here on Facebook yeah, I'm as well, what too. Else is thinking uh, about some this. people have been sharing their thoughts a little bit about it. Um, James comments about it. So Aaron says this first. He said, uh, any other girl on steroids would have been banned. Uh, he said it's uh, it's it's he said it's not fair. How do you draw the line? Yeah, how do you draw the line? James says he tried to compete in uh, boys division with the Texas law says that they must compete in what their birth certificate says. Um, the rules say that apparently. So even though she was so since she was born and she became a man, she had to compete there and she won that way. So either way, just a really weird situation. I feel like as a whole, as you try to really address what the best way is to kind of to, to shuffle through a lot of that, honestly. So right. some people will agree with it. Some people will say, no, that's wrong. I don't know. I feel know. like you're always going to have that. No matter, I it mean, is. And anytime you get into the conversation of, of transgender, you always run into where do we go from here, basically, mm -hmm. you know, kind of a thing. So, all right, uh, moving on a little bit from that as well to Dancing with the Stars has made some exciting announcements recently as well, Tika. Uh, they've mm -hmm. announced their new roster of stars for the 2017 uh, show that's going to be coming out uh, headlined by Olympian Simone Biles. Uh, there's also going to be uh, a figure skater as well. Uh, the Cubs former catcher David Ross is going to be joining there as well. Uh, Nancy Kerrigan, a uh, former Olympic figure skater, and uh, NFL running back Rashad Jennings as well. Two professional bull rider uh, Bonner Bolton as well That's very uh, interesting, are all man. contestants with the athletic backgrounds. I I've always wondered too. I you're you're a dancer. Yeah. You dance for a long time. I have mm -hmm. a ballroom dancing background myself oh, as well. Do you? fun fact. I, I didn't, didn't know, know if you that. knew that. No. Um, comment with your favorite style of dancing below. By the way, if it's more <laughs> of like the shake or if you're more of like a ballroom, we you know we'd love to hear that. But yeah, when you when you bring athletes into this, so many times you hear athletes, and maybe your experience has been different. You bring mm -hmm. athletes purposely try to take dancing lessons to get better balance, to be more elite, to be more, you know, physically fit because oh, as you can attest, I mean, your body was, you were in shape, even though some people are like, well, you were just dancing. Right. You weren't hitting right. anything. You weren't running really fast. Well, I've had it happen so many times too growing up. Like guys would say, oh, it's like, you can never do sports, but like I could dance. Like it's not that hard. But then once they're thrown into it or once they like yeah. see how, how, like the hard work that goes into it and the balance you have to have, you have to be able to count to music. I mean, yeah. that's, I'm sure that's something that um, some of these athletes are going to have to learn going into it as well. Um, I think that Simone and Nancy are both going to have a little bit of a, I think it's going to be a little easier for them because as mm -hmm. a gymnast and as a figure skater, True. Um, You're already they have dancing the balance, on the ice. they know how to count <laughs> to music, yes. you know what I mean? So they have some of those in their, their you know, I don't, know how to, I don't know what uh, what the catcher is going to be able to do or the bull rider. That's what I want. I'm thinking Simone and Nancy are going to have a little step up just because they have the balance and they have that stuff down. But I know. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you've seen <laughs> former players and athletes as well, too. Uh, Emmett Smith, Jerry Rice, Donald Driver, former mm -hmm. you know Green Bay Packer, won Dancing with the Stars. That was that was the big thing for a long time. Like Donald Driver doing yeah. the country dance. You know, I thought Super that was a really, a really cool thing. But. I, at what point do you feel like I feel like some of the people that they choose is just kind of ridiculous at some points like why are you bringing a professional bull rider into this why are you bringing in you know a baseball player sometimes some people might you know if I was playing professional football playing professional soccer I would definitely make the fact that I had a dancing background known and be like I would totally right. go on something like right. this even now if they want me I'm not much of a star but I'd be like pick right, me right. pick me I would totally be on I think that would be an awesome yeah. thing to be able to do, honestly. I think they choose some of the people to, to, you know, purposely choose some people to keep it interesting. Yes. And you can't choose people that all, you know, are going to succeed in it. You have to choose people that are going to, you know, they're going to have to work hard and, exactly. and work for it. Exactly. And that's why sometimes people are like, well, if we choose professional athletes, well, they're going to work hard. They already have had to work hard for their job as a whole. So right. why wouldn't they work hard again in this situation? Which makes sense. I totally get that. James says salsa dancing is his favorite type. Uh, Aaron says he likes to tango with his wife. Mm. Um, what, what is your favorite style of dancing? Do you uh, have a preference? Oh Even gosh. if it wasn't well, ballroom, what was your, your well, go-to? I did take a ballroom dancing lesson with my dad once. It was super fun. But, I love ballroom dancing. Um, I did almost everything growing up. So I um, had ballet class. I did jazz, lyrical tap, hip-hop. So I mm -hmm. have palm jazz i said jazz already I yeah. Think so, yeah so many <laughs> um but yeah i pretty much tried everything out and so okay. i think probably jazz was the most fun for me um and tap was up there too yeah i would tap agree was I mean, really fun i did i did jazz and hip-hop for one year i did a did a routine you gotta remember since you're from the green bay generally remember barb center for dance i remember if you were i danced there growing up there you go exactly. i was there for a year too maybe we danced together in another Maybe. life Tika. you never know 
did a routine with them for a year, did their whole fall showcase or whatever. It was, it was a great oh my time. Gosh, Paid like awesome. $6,000 for, you know, like yep. a, a piece of duct tape <laughs> and a hat, basically. And like, there's your outfit. And be like, what? I just, I feel like dancing outfits are ridiculous, and I don't want to go on too big of a tangent here, but can we talk about how much money goes into dance outfits yeah. that you wear one time? My mom would love to talk about that. I bet she should. We need to get Mama Griesbach on the show. Be like, how much money have you yeah. spent, Antigua, just on dancing? And be like, oh, we don't even want to talk about I mean, that. I think that's what she would say, yeah. Yes, yes, exactly. Oh, yeah, it's uh, a very expensive hobby. But. It is. It, it's ridiculous, but they work so hard, though, too, yeah. which is which is crazy. And you know, you know. You've experienced it. Yeah, I did, did ballroom for six years. I had a blast with it. It was, it was a great time. That's how I met my wife, ultimately, was doing ballroom dancing as well, too. So Fun fact. Fun fact. The more you know, Tika. <laughs> uh, Corey comments on Facebook as well, too. He says he really likes to do hip-hop dance. That's uh, fine. A lot. a lot of people think that's a really Very good workout. Um, there's mm-hmm. the, the workout program, Size, which is uh, a workout that you do a dance routine progressively. You learn more of the steps as you progressively go through, and then you put it all together at the end, and it's a more of a workout type of thing, okay. and it's really slick. So I know a lot of people like to do that. Um, and then James also said his cousin's a dancer, uh, and she practices every day for four hours and then has about an eight to ten hour practices on the weekends as well, too. I yeah. I can't oh, even yeah. imagine. I mean, you, th- you think about, like, what athletes do. You think about what, and once again, as soon as you say the word athlete and you, just, you put the dancers in another category, people yep. lose their minds. <laughs> I, I will say the only time I ever go to bat for something like that is I said cheerleading is not a sport, and then people freak out at me. Yeah. But that's a whole other topic for another whole time. Whole other topic. But <laughs> dancers are definitely athletes because their bodies, nine times out of ten, are almost in better shape than the yeah. cross-country runners and the soccer players and the football, basketball, mm-hmm. like all of that. Like I have mucho respect for, for people like They're that. They're just a different kind of athlete. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I, I completely agree with you on that one, too. I mean, did you ever – you said you received kind of criticism, though, too, growing up about, oh, you're a dancer. Like you wouldn't understand yeah. what it means to, yeah. to do this or, or do that. Or you're a girly girl because I only – I only did dance. I, I think I, vo- I tried volleyball like in so middle school. So didn't you say you once. played volleyball? Yeah, I think you played yeah, volleyball in like eighth grade. A little grade. bit, yep, in middle school, um, which I enjoyed. It was different, but <laughs> dancing was just, that was my thing. I yeah. even, I, you mentioned Barb Center for Dance. I danced yep. there, and I was on the dance team for my high school at the same time. So oh, that nice. was, I have, yeah, it was just very busy growing up. <laughs> Sounds like it. And that's the thing, too. Like my, my niece is a dancer, and she used to dance, I think, five or six days a week um, where she lives and now she's cut back a lot too because she does show choir as well too mm-hmm. now in, co- in high school sure. so she you know supplemented her dance with her show choiring a little bit as well too so totally different to an extent show choir still takes a lot out of you as well oh, too sure. but it's always kind of funny though to, to see the the different things that people do when it comes to to, to showing what kind of dancing that they like to do or kind of entertainment, basically. So, all right, we're going to go to a break. Uh, when we come back, we're going to bring in one of our soccer correspondents to talk about the She Believes Cup. So we will have part two of Happy Hour coming up in two minutes. So stay with us. It is Bruce Sports live right here. We'll be back with more right after this. Stay tuned. <laughs> 